Housing prices have reached an all-time high in America. And how could Wall Street be impacted? Let's dive in. Really excited about the guest we have joining us today. We have Dylan Jovenet with Behind the Markets. Dylan, you've been on our channel a couple of times talking about biotech. His stock picks earlier this year uh, have now doubled in value since we last talked, Dylan. And we're excited not doing biotech this time, this time talking about a different industry, something everyone's talking about, and that's the housing market. What got you interested in this, Dylan? Well, thank you for having me here. It's it's nice to be on. Uh, I'm grateful to be here. But you know what? Actually, what got me interested in in the housing market specifically is um, I have a lot of people that work with us, and they make really good incomes. And a lot of friends of mine make really good incomes, and they're having trouble affording a house. You know, this is the foundation of the American dream. So I started saying to myself, Well, gosh, why do people two income families six figures? Why are they having so much trouble affording a house? What, what is this all about? So I really started to ask that question and I started to dig in to the root causes about uh, of that. And what I found was, you know, disturbing. Yeah, what did you find? I think that's the question that everyone's been asking because yeah. housing prices have just kept getting higher the last few years. Everyone is talking about how houses are just not affordable anymore. Did you find that magic answer everyone's been looking for? Well, first, I don't think people realize I was surprised to learn just how expensive they had gotten. Just to give you some context, they are right now more expensive houses than they were in 2006, 23% more expensive. And we use that, we know that because, you know, in the stock market, you have a PE ratio, a price to earnings ratio, which tells you the price of a company based on the earnings of the past 12 months. Well, in the home market, they have what's called a PI ratio, price to income. So basically what they do is they look at average homes in relation to average income. Now, historically, for the last 50 years since records have been kept in any meaningful modern sense, uh, the price to income ratio was about 3.4, meaning if you made $100,000 on average, the average person made $100,000, the average home would cost 3.4, that or $340,000. In the 2006 bubble, that reached a high, a then historic record of 4.7 meaning that housing prices were 4.7 times more expensive than the average income. Well, right now we're at 5.8. Wow. So we are 23% higher than the housing bubble that caused the Great Recession and, and the, you know, the financial crisis of 2008-2009. Yeah, that is a scary statistic. And we all know what happened back then with all the foreclosures and the empty houses that we saw sitting around on the market for quite a while during that season. But right now, I feel like we're seeing something different in the housing market. And that's that demand is still there. Lots of people mm. are still looking for a home right now, despite the very high prices. That's right. And you know what's, what's interesting? So if the average person in America, so home prices have doubled in the past 10 years since 2014. The average income has gone up. 13.8%, $73,000 a year. So basically, home prices could do anything they want in the short term. But in the long term, they're based on incomes. I mean, think about it. A mortgage company's a bank's going to look at your income and say, okay, we're going to write you a loan based on a 30-year income. So no matter what, they have to approximate incomes in the long term. So we have a two-pronged problem here, two-sided issue here. One is that housing prices have to come down. The other is, as you mentioned, we still have demand. People still want houses. So what we've come to find out is that we have a supply problem. There just isn't enough houses on the market. And Zillow estimates that we are about 4.5 million houses short of total demand. Now, because of the inflation that we've had in the past few years, a lot of folks aren't going to be buying those big three, four, five thousand, you know, square foot McMansions anymore. They can't afford them. We're going to have to. So, what kind of homes can they afford? So, we're actually starting to now look at uh, what is what size home should people who make seventy four thousand dollars, you know, afford? And that's kind of brought us to to where we are today. 
Well, that all sounds like an opportunity for a company out there and also opportunity for investors who might be yeah. looking to, to get in on that kind of a market. Uh, what do you have for us today? Well, okay, so there are a few small companies that manufacture, you know, they call them manufactured homes. They used to call them modular homes. But, you know, basically one of them is Champion Homes, symbol is SKY. It's at 9315. Now, this is one of the largest builders of manufactured homes. I mean, in their homes, homes sold jumped 37%. In the past year, its backlog jumped 28 percent. Earnings of 91 cents beat estimates by 21 percent. You know, er, you know, I mean, it's just crushing it. So you see this new, you know, demand for these smaller houses that people can afford instead of these 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 square foot houses. You're seeing these companies that are manufacturing 800, 1,500, 2,000 square foot houses go bonkers. Champions right at the top of the list. Okay, so Champion Homes definitely getting these houses, affordable houses, out quicker. And that's something that's been uh, heard a lot on the campaign trail from lots of different people running for office right now. Uh, it's a topic that across the country everyone cares about. So how is that impacting the stock? Well, it's a great point you bring up. As a matter of fact, both major political candidates have talked about expanding the supply of uh, single family homes on the market. So that's one of the reasons, a great question, that Champion Homes has really been just killing it this year, just absolutely killing it. And as the Fed keeps lowering rates, they should do very, very well as either candidate gets in office is going to be pushing to alleviate this uh, housing supply crisis, frankly. So champions at the top of the list, are there other stocks or companies like Champion out there that are also getting on that more affordable housing market? Absolutely. Another one is Cavco Industries, symbol is CBCO. And this is also one of the largest makers of manufactured homes. This includes single family homes. They also do RVs, vacation cabins. They've been doing it for 60 years. Again, this is a story where you have home sales volume up 20% backlog up 21%, but that's not yet priced into the stock, which is why billionaire investors like Paul Tudor Jones, Ray Dalio, and Joel Greenblatt have been buying the heck out of this stock. Those are some pretty big names you mentioned that are buying up this stock, but how recently have those investors been buying up Capco Industries? And that's a great question. I mean, this is the most recent SEC filings. We see that Paul Tudor Jones, Ray Dalio, Joel, Joel Greenblatt either owned positions and started upgrading theirs or just came in now and started massive buying of these stocks. So this is all live and it's all very current within the past few months. And the stock has not moved much since they started buying. So this is a great entry price for investors that are interested in this kind of uh, supply problem with housing and the companies that are going to solve it. We talk about upside for a minute. Just how much upside do you think investors could get if they're getting in now on this company? I believe Cavco is selling for half, you know, 50% below what it's worth. I also believe the same thing about Sky. I actually believe this is a $200 stock. I mean, it's selling at $93 right now. But, you know, given the right circumstances, this stock can really, really, really take off. Now, do you have one more pick for us that's kind of in the same space of looking to take advantage of the need for more affordable homes? Well, I have a few more picks, but those are for our paying customers. But I did, of course, bring another pick for you in the housing area that I actually like a lot. Uh, and that's Toll Brothers. This is kind of a name that everybody knows. Um, and what I like about them, they don't really specifically focus, they're not known for so focusing on smaller houses, but they do make build to order homes, which I like a lot because they don't get stuck carrying a thousand, 2,000, 5,000 homes on their inventory all the time. They basically can build a home to the size and taste of the buyer, which gives them immediate flexibility to really go down and customize smaller homes uh, for much more affordable prices. So in my view, that is of the legacy big name home builders that we all know uh, every day, Toll Brothers is probably best fit and geared for this kind of thing. A couple of other things to point out about them. I mean, this is just such a well-run business. Massive stock buybacks. I mean, they have taken their float from 184 million shares outstanding 10 years ago to just 107 million now. Okay, so what is it trading at right now? Is this kind of a bargain buy for investors? Yeah, so this is trading at just 12 times free cash flow. 
which is 35, 40% lower than it has historically. So you have a company that is growing its business, that is buying back its stock, that is trading historically cheap. I mean, the company is doing all the right things. And as the Fed keeps lowering rates, that should send the stock soaring too. That's a great tip for investors out there. Now, look, with this stock and the others that we've talked about, I want to talk about just the commodity prices. Does that impact the potential for these? We've had such a range of commodity prices over the last few years. It is getting better now. But can that impact the riskiness maybe of some of these buys? Well, I mean, so basically commodity prices, by the way, they are going down right now. They've been going down a lot, which tells you that construction isn't great, which is, by the way, a recession warning sign. You know, it tells you that, you know, this is a this is a problem. So we are keeping an eye on this, of course. But, you know, commodity prices go down. That should make it this is why this is a hedge position that should make it easier for everybody. They should be able to sell these units at cheaper prices, which in theory would just expand the market, get a lot more buyers and fill that four and a half million supply gap quicker. Well, you gave us three great picks today that are involved in the, the demand for more housing across the country, but I know you have a lot more. Tell us where viewers can go to find more of the stock picks that you have in this industry. Well, you're probably not going to have to go far because we, we do a lot of stuff with MarketBeat, but feel free to go to BehindTheMarkets.com. That's www.BehindTheMarkets.com. And this is a new special report you have out. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yep. We are going to be releasing our special report on housing, a research report we spent the last four months doing. Only at MarketBeat, we're breaking this special story. You're getting a quick early preview of what kind of the things we're talking about in that report. But that'll be out for our customers first, of course, for the, you know, in two weeks. And then we will be releasing, uh, releasing it to the general public. So keep your eyes open for it. We're very excited about it. Awesome. Dylan, always so great to have you on the channel. Thanks for the great information. We're going to link some of Dylan's other videos that he shared before. If you liked some of the great tips he gave today, he gives a lot of them. So we've got those videos linked here too. Thanks for joining us on MarketBeat Media. And as always, happy investing. Happy investing.